Hey guys, welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise. Myself, Jason, bringing you whiskey review number 89, where today we're going to be reviewing the Cavalan, or it's known as the King Car Conductor. So, this is one I picked up from Master of Malt, drinks by the Dram, picked up myself a sample. As I try this a couple times, I'm slowly working my way to it and getting used to it. So, before I actually forget, this is actually take two because the camera cut out and the battery died, so I was in the middle of recording review number, well, the, the first review of this one, and then it cut out, so I'm going to basically pour myself the remaining dram and get into the review itself. So, into the review of the King Car Conductor. Now, this one here is from the Cavalan Distillery in Taiwan, and I'm going to explain a little bit whilst this has a little time to breathe. So I'll do my review style structure, then I'll talk about the whiskey. So, to begin with the review style structure, this one, in terms of age, is a no-age statement whiskey. It is pretty much, as I mentioned, the hot climate in Taiwan makes the maturation process speed up quite rapidly, and therefore it sort of matures at a much more faster rate and pace. In terms of the ABV for this one, this is bottled at 46%. And if you haven't probably seen the bottle, I'll ping one over there for you. That's how it looks. Um, in terms of the cast selection to memory, it does contain sherry casks, ex-bourbon casks, and I believe a couple wine casks as well. It does have, I believe, three to eight types of casks that go into the maturation of this whiskey. And it doesn't really specify them anywhere else, but the master distiller, when I sat with him here in London, uh, he took me through a few different things, and this was almost a, a few months back, but we got to speak a little bit about Cavalan, because it's one of the whiskeys I really do adore. Now, in terms of the distillery itself, it is the Cavalan distillery over there. You can see it's a beautiful, picturesque place. And I will be visiting them in December, so I will take you along with me. If you would like to go with me to Taiwan, by all means, stay tuned and subscribe. And I'll leave the subscribe button over there uh, towards the end of the video. Um, but yeah, stay tuned and you'll see. I'll take you along with me in December. We'll go to Taiwan. We'll visit Cavalan. We'll drink a lot of Cavalan as well. <laughs> and uh, we'll just have a good time. So anyway, in terms of the actual parent company is the King Car Group. And the region is from Ilan County in Taiwan. So the northern part of Taiwan, so near Taipei. So in terms of the actual price for this bottle over here, it's priced at 70 pounds. I think it was 75 pounds or so in London. So around about 70 to 75 pounds here in the UK. So it is a little bit up there. Uh, but in terms of exclusivity, it's not exclusive. It's part of the core range. And caramel coloring, well, this is all natural color. Look at that. Natural color, as it does contain lots of different casks, which are sort of married together, and the flavors have really merged themselves very well. Now, to get back to the story, but I'll talk about the story of, of the King Car Conductor. First thing I wanna ask, if any of you guys have tried any Cavalans, leave it down below in the comment section. Let me know which one of you tried, and if you haven't, so I was gonna say let me know your country, but then it might not be such a good one. And let me know which country you guys live in, because that way I wanna find out which countries don't have it, and maybe if I'm visiting later on next, well, early next year, I'll bring some Cavalan with me because it's one of the whiskeys I just really adore at the minute. Maybe we'll see which one I'll bring. But anyway, getting back to the review itself. So in talking about the King Car Conductor, the name is actually derived and it actually doesn't have Cavalan in it when you look at the box. And this is because the owner of the actual company, Mr. Lee, um, he wanted to have a whiskey that embodied the King Car Group brand. So he wanted to have something that was named after the group. And the King Car Conductor sort of fit, it fitted place perfectly as it does have, it's not a single cask, it's not a type of finish. This one has a combination of many different casks married together to make this whiskey. And it's just like the company, very diverse, lots of sort of layers and complexity, but at the same time, the way in which it works with harmony with one another is just, something of a marvel. So that's why you have the King Car Conductor. Now, if I remember correctly, um, I think it was the name of the company or the name of the whiskey that Mr. the master distiller Ian Chang told me. I think it's King Car, King Car Group or King Car Conductor. It means prosperity in terms of what they, in terms of what it means, prosperity driving into the future. So a really awesome way of saying that. That is just Something you don't get in Scotch whiskey. So anyway, I also want to say, um, so yeah, that, that's about it in terms of actually the name. Now, if you're wondering why it's called the Conductor, um, Mr. Lee as well, the founder of, of the uh, King Car Group, he's got a big passion for classical music. So most of the whiskeys you'll see, like the Classic, the Concert Master, the Conductor, and the Podium, 
are all inspired by classical music. So you'll see classic music, the concert master, um, the podium, being up on the podium, and then also here the conductor. The conductor having one of the major roles in conducting the orchestra, because without them, there would be no music. So just like the same way in which it embodies the brand without being it's conducting the actual sort of company, there would be no sort of thing. So no sort of company. So anyway, let's begin by assessing my whiskey review. I'll hold it up to the camera. Let me know what you think the color is on that. If you've got a dram, pour it. But I think this is like a deep sort of a rich amber. It's got a very nice color to it. It's sticking to the glass as well very nicely. Nice legs. Woo. So let's begin by assessing the nose of this whiskey. Into the nose. So to begin on the nose of this whiskey, and this one, I have given it around about five minutes as I was talking. It does have a very nice, soft sort of sweetness that comes through. And this is like a citrus peel. I'm gonna say like a candied orange peel, giving it a nice sort of citrusy burst to it. But then there's also a little sweeter aspect that makes its way through. And I'm thinking this is more like icing sugar. Just, you know, if you stick your nose in a box of icing sugar, and you get that sweet aroma that just all sort of lingers around, that sort of note comes off more on the nose. There's a very interesting exotic note on this one. It's like a, how to describe it? Coconut, coconut snowball. If you guys have ever had it, it's basically a sweet. I'm gonna probably leave a picture of it here, provided I don't get done for, for giving it. But it's like a chocolate snowball, which has marshmallow inside, and the outside is coated in um, coconut sprinkles. So it's like you're taking a bite of that, you're getting sort of the, the sort of the aromas from the nose of the coconut sort of milk chocolate. I'm not really getting marshmallow in all honesty, but the two out of three will do for me. <laughs> you do get that vanilla note as well, and it's like a roasted vanilla. It's like a softly toasted, I'd say toasted, not roasted, toasted vanilla pod. And as you're just taking it out and you're cracking it open, the aromas from the vanilla are coming through. There is also a little slightly pungent, spicy aspect on the end of the nose, and I'm picking it more on the left-hand side. It's like a black pepper, like a crackling of a back black pepper. But then there's also a sweeter aspect behind that, like a honey, so interesting. Spice and sweetness. Anyway, let's next move into the palate for this whiskey. So, into the palate. To begin on the palate for this whiskey, it does start out very interesting. The spices are very evident, however, First thing that comes to mind is a combination of the sweet and the bitter sort of sour note. And this reminds me of a licorice. I'd say more like a, a red, one of those licorice tubes. A nice sort of sweetness, but the sour, bitter note really working its way through across first. The spices then introduce themselves. And this is like a, a soft sort of cinnamon bark. And it reminds me also a little bit of an aniseed fireball, giving you that mouth warming feel. But at the same time, you try these aniseed fireballs. They're like awesome when you're kids. Uh, start off quite sweet, and then you get the spices and the mouth warming aspect really making their way through. I'm also getting what reminds me of a caramel, sort of one of the caramel puddings called a caramel flan. So getting that also, very nice rounded sweetness. It's got a little bit of fruity now. I'm gonna have a second sip, see what else we can extract. So those fruity notes are just fading. Still getting a sweeter aspect. Definitely now I'm picking up those fruity aspects after a second sip. It does sort of fade a bit prematurely. I'm getting red apple, red plums. And what reminds me of like a bounty chocolate bar. Have you ever tried a bounty chocolate bar? It's got like coconut inside and just coated with milk chocolate. I don't know, I'm getting lots of this chocolate and coconut pairing. I, this is rather interesting. I've never had that normally on a whiskey. So next we're gonna move into the finish of this whiskey. And just to mention about the actual texture, it's got a medium texture. However, it does sort of finish quite quickly on the, on the palate. So we'll see how long the finish is. So into the finish. So into the finish of this whiskey, it does have lots of spices and these spices are literally pinging the middle of my palate a bit to the front and tickling the sides as well. It does have, sort of remind me of like a sour cherry drop sweet with a little bit of a fizzy sort of cherry sweetness that's sort of ringing along with it. Red pears, red apples, sweet sultanas, the chewy sultanas. And a little bit of, I'd say, sweet honeyed spices 
And this is like cinnamon spice, not anything else. Yeah, not too bad. So, we're gonna give my rating and my overall conclusion. And for this one, I'm gonna say it's around about an 85. Um, reason behind this rating is because, I, personally, I really like the nose a lot. However, there's gonna be a however in this one. Hopefully that one is visible. The reason behind that one, I just found the spice aspect of this one a little bit too pungent on the middle of the palette. And that's sort of what, something I personally not a big fan of in certain styles when I get that pungent note. However, the complexity is there. It does offer a lot in terms of the flavor profiles. You're getting the sherry notes, you're getting the bourbon cast notes coming through, adding that little sweetness. Would I say it's value for money at around about 70 pounds? Probably I'd say 70 is not bad. I think that's quite reasonable for the complexity and the amount of cast they're using in this one. Uh, I think there's also a couple of refill, they use refill casts as well. Would I add water to this whiskey? I'm probably gonna give it a try and see how that varies. Um, and would I recommend time? Yes, do give it some time. It sweetens up the nose so much more, makes it more approachable. And personally, that's one of the things that I really enjoyed is giving that little bit of time. As I was talking in the beginning, makes it whiskey much more easier to nose. The actual palette and sort of the finish. And I felt it sort of ended a bit quickly, so that's why I'm not giving it such a high rating, but it deserves an A5, because it's got a nice balance and nice sort of complexity. It does have the layers which are quite well bound together in this whiskey. So on that note, I'm gonna wrap the video at that. If you haven't checked out the other videos, I'll leave the other ones in the core range. I think it should be the classic, concert master, and the podium over here. Be also sure to click my subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest videos. And on that note, I think I'm gonna wrap the video at that. So if you have enjoyed, drop it a like. Be sure to subscribe, and this has been Jason Whiskey Wise, and I'll catch you all for my next video.